Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am Brian Mitchell. And I am Aaron Braggins. And today we will talk about the 2018 iPad Pro. Uh, you can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO58. So Aaron, you have a new iPad. Now, But just to set the stage, which size did you get? Uh, I got the uh, 11-inch iPad Pro uh, in 64 gigs. Uh, Mostly because it was the cheapest one I could possibly get. Uh, Because I know that I'm going to want a new one in the future. You know, that's smart thinking. I I always go for the, you know, I'm going to get the second size up just in case I want to put a lot of video on here or some stupid reason that never ends up becoming true. Yeah. Uh, that, that exactly why I did what I did. I, I tested this with the iPhone 10. I'm like, yeah, but I take a lot of photos. I do a lot of video. I never use the space. Yeah. I use, I usually, I've always gotten the, not the cheapest, but the one above that for my iPhone. Way back since the iPhone 4, I got the 32, and then I had, what was the 5? I think 32 again, and then 64, and then 128. Now I have the 256, and I use up to about half of the storage, mm. which is a little more than comfortable for when you have half as much storage. You don't want to ride on the edge. but Right. But enough about the iPhone. <laughs> iPad... 11 inch ipad pro uh yeah i like it quite a bit um i use it primarily as my house device the one i travel around with so it gets a lot of abuse yet are you are you like sitting on the couch sitting in a chair bed do you put it in a stand or hold it or all of the above. Uh, we have stands in the kitchen. We have stands, uh, like right now, it's in between my monitor and my keyboard, uh, you know, propped up on a stand. Um, yeah. Yeah, I find, I so I have the 2016 iPad Pro 9.7 inch, mm-hmm. and I find I usually, I'm holding it or it's in a little stand. Yep. Sometimes I have a TV episode or YouTube playing while I'm cooking. Yep. Um, Otherwise, I sit and just catch up on the internet, usually. Yeah. Uh, I never use uh, a case, like a folio case. Um, I want to... That's one of the reasons I was hoping uh, you or Brandon had an iPad, so I could ask you, do you have a folio case? Um, I was kind of nervous about buying the $200 version from Apple. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a commitment. Yeah. So you have the one with the keyboard in it? Uh, no, I actually. Or it's, it's the. It, all I bought as accessory was the pen, or the okay. pencil. Sorry. Yeah. Um. And I. What I did with my previous iPad is I had a Logitech keyboard, that you know Bluetooth keyboard. It sat on top of. Um, and I was I'm tempted to try the folio case with the keyboard, but. Uh, I'm kind of waiting to see if there's third party that comes out that is a better keyboard. Yeah, I've heard the Bridge keyboard is being developed right now, and that should be for sale this spring. And I know that's been a favorite third party keyboard for the iPad Pro for the last couple of years. Yeah, yep. And I think the pre order sold out. Like, okay. I think they were going to be early spring, and all the pre orders sold out. Wow, yeah. So, well, I'm sure there'll be other options as well. Like I've right. I've always wondered, should I just buy a super cheap Bluetooth keyboard and just use that a little bit, but yeah. At that point, if I'm t- going to be using a keyboard to type, I'll just use a MacBook. So, uh in this new iPad, there are a few hardware changes from previous iPads. Actually, let's first say where, did you have an iPad before getting this one? Uh, I did. I had a iPad Air 2. Um, and I think that was... 2014 is when it got its FCC approval. Okay, so probably somewhere in there. October, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, th- I mean, one of the reasons I skipped the Pro and the 10.5 
is it it just worked i mean standard scenario it did it was fast enough it did everything i needed um but when i saw the 10.5 the previous generation ipad pro i was really tempted um by just the big the screen 120 hertz when it was playing video or anything in motion um but i for some reason i missed the release date i didn't jump on it but when this one came out i was kind of like i'm done i need something a little faster yeah and this is definitely i I think i mean it's uh kind of the first major hardware redesign of the ipad in years and years almost since the original i would say i would say since the original i mean the air was really the just made it slimmer but it still had the front uh iconic design with the you know fingerprint reader and everything like that yeah and that like one inch bezel around the whole side and the curved aluminum on the back Mm -hmm. um so do, do you find the new square edges are make it difficult to pick up and use or is that not really a a factor for you um i don't really notice it to be honest um so what you're talking about is it is a new design a new form factor um square edges not rounded um bezel uh i find that i can pick it up again no case i can pick it up off the table relatively easy um but generally i think i hold it off a table so i can grab it so like maybe like a quarter of it is sitting off the table you know kind of hanging there and i can pick it up but majority of the time i set it down in a stand at night and it's got it gets plugged in and i pick it up and go um yeah. but uh yeah yeah my 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 ipad just kind of sits i keep it on my bedside table usually and it's a little large for the area i have dedicated Mm -hmm. to it so it always hangs over a little bit too yeah i would also say it it feels lighter um without comparing like the weight but i think it's just because i've become used to it um Mm -hmm. i think it's is it the thinnest ipad apple's made i know it's thinner than the iphones these days it is the thinnest ipad they make or they have made um but it's also got the biggest screen that they've ever made in both well no not in the 12 inch um that's the same size as last generation but in the um in the small form factor it's the largest screen that they've made yeah so like in the 11 inch they filled the old case size with a larger screen and the 12 inch they kept the screen and made the case a little smaller around the yep they screen. shrunk the bezels in that one yeah so um part of the shrinking of bezels is a removal of the home button and touch id and instead you have face id so how's that um so face id works when it works it's amazing um and I would say it works probably 75% of the time. Um, the 25% of the time, your your hand's covering the camera. So, like, the camera is at the top of the iPad when you're looking at it in portrait. In landscape, it's on the side. And if you're right-handed or left-handed, depending on your how you hold your iPad generally the camera is covered by one of your hands and even like i i'm i want to say it's probably more than 25 percent, but it it's a truly about that it just feels like it's more is it points this little arrow saying hey by the way you're covering the camera move your hand and you gotta fumble around and like move your hand and then at that point, it would have taken less time to just use Touch ID. Right. It's kind of a that's kind of provides a reference point too. Yep. Yep. I, I feel like the camera would kind of get hidden, and you lose track of which side it's on if you flip it around a lot. Right. Right. And if you don't have like uh, the pencil on it to kind of indicate where the 
quote unquote top is, you know. So like, I I came from the iPhone, uh, ten, with the uh, Face ID, and I thought that was just the most amazing piece of kit for a phone. And I'm like, every time I'd go to my iPad, I would just sit there and stare at it, and say, why is this not working, right? Yeah, like I'm. I'm the same way with my iPad. It's just like, uh, okay, I have to change how I'm holding it to authenticate this action. And, yeah. Right, right. And then you're like, oh, I can touch it. It, 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 it's, it is faster. Where this one, I, I wanted it to work like the iPhone did, where you just grab it and it unlocks. But there's so many times where it just doesn't work as graceful as an Apple product should work. Um, Again, I don't know how to fix it. Maybe have two cameras, one at the top, one on the side, that can quickly hand off. But that's, like, the one thing that I wanted this thing to do the most, it actually kind of fails at. Um, hmm. But it works. Like, if you are if you have it in portrait mode, it's always going to unlock because you're never, you're never covering the camera. But if you use it as a laptop or a tablet that you're going to be typing on looking at grabbing you're kind of grabbing the camera area because the bezel is so thin yeah, um, you have you have to hold it somehow and right. it happens to be that that's right where you want to hold it right yeah i wonder if they if they would move the camera more towards a corner if that would help but maybe that ruins the aesthetic and you know um symmetricalness of the design as well Potentially. So, like, looking at it, when the... the, Because the camera's in the bezel. You wouldn't even see the camera if it was put up in the corner or something like that. Because the bezel really, truly hides it. Okay. Yeah. Because there's, like, a quarter inch, right, all around compared to the one inch that it was before. And I have a black... I don't know if they make a white-faced iPad Pro, but I have the black bezel... I've always had space gray, so, you know, like a white bezel has never been in my purview. I'm going to actually look it up to see if they have a white bezel. Yeah, I'm curious not to. My my 2016 iPad is white, and so it uh, you definitely see where the camera is. Looking on Apple's site, it's all black. Yeah. I feel like kind of with the... Uh, iPhone 10 and 10s as well. It comes in multiple colors, but the face I think is still black because they try to make it, you know, the seamless switch from screen to side of the phone. And right, right, and a white bezel would actually hide that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's just in black. Yeah, but again, the camera is suitable. Uh, you know. I haven't taken any video or pictures with it because primarily I do that with my iPhone. Um, yeah. But like set up, and anyone with an Apple product kind of knows how setting up these devices just, it's almost, it's super seamless. You just walk up to your existing device, have it close and says, do you want to transfer all your information? You click one button and boom, it's set up. It's super slick, Yeah. Yeah, and then basically going into the bezels, um, you know, from Face ID, comparing it to the the old iPad, you just have less area to kind of grip the iPad and hold on to the iPad. But I, they've done really good, uh, what I would say, palm rejection and, you know, finger detection that isn't uh, like a pointing or navigation um the multiple finger rejection when you're kind of holding it i haven't run into any real goofy uh scenarios that you would think uh would come up when you're trying to hold it and type with one hand or you know swipe or navigate with one hand while you're holding the the ipad yeah yeah it's always been pretty good for me too yeah, I'm thinking how I hold my iPad, and I definitely use that like one inch bezel a lot to, for my thumb. Yeah, and I can fill that whole area. But so we talked about Face ID, the bezels, no home button. How are the the gestures of without the home button? Is that normal to you? Do you 
swipe up around a lot or just in between apps? I would say I swipe in between apps the most. And that works just like the iPhone 10. You know, swipe on the bottom, um, slide across, go back, go forward. I do a lot with like LastPass, uh, password manager stuff. So, because um, I don't auto don't try i try not to autofill so um yeah that seems to work really good um i can't say that i'm a huge gesture user quite yet on the ipad um but the uh design from the iphone translates to the ipad really well swipe down from the right you get your uh oh, what is that called Control center. Control center, right. And you can adjust everything. Um, and then notifications swipe down from the left. Um, works quite well. Um, what I want to get into is like split screen and stuff like that. Um, but that kind of rolls into the software end of iOS. Um, and that's like a different discussion, I think. Uh, yeah, we're we're due for a an iOS upgrade that helps benefit the software on iPad a lot. I think. Yeah, oh yeah, I, and it's coming. I mean, like it, I, I think th- this could be a computer replacement, and I want it to be. Um, there's just like we're almost there. Yeah, uh, so. I I agree with you, and the the price point and power of those iPads are approaching or surpassing that of equally priced computers i think yeah oh yeah even even double doubly priced macbooks right i mean what was it the i think i can't remember the review site that did it but when this came out they compared the uh, single threaded javascript browser load comparison to the ipad to the macbook pro and the ipad want uh, beat it if i remember correctly yeah, the I, I at least read that with the iPhone XS. The the Apple's A12 chip is the first ARM chip to support their 8.3 instruction set, which has extra instructions for numbers the same way that JavaScript does it. So uh, operations are much faster on the new A12, which is both the iPad Pro and iPhone XS and XR. So... Super fast web device, that's for sure. Yep. See, that's why you're on the show. (laughs) What about USB-C? That is the most amazing thing. Like, I didn't believe it until I saw it. Because I I want USB-C on everything. Um, It opens up so many avenues for tinkering with it to make it kind of a real computer. Um, earlier, uh, in the last year when I first got it, I was actually trying to set up a a podcasting station where I just plugged in a USB-C mic, uh, through an adapter, uh, and it, it worked like it recognized the mic. I was able to record, um, the, it would be a perfect solo uh, recording station like if you wanted to record with a bunch of friends around one mic it'd be great um, you can plug in a monitor and have a secondary display just need an adapter that does USB-C to Thunderbolt or sorry USB-C to uh, HDMI or uh, display port boom um, so that gets me revved up like bring my iPad to work my iPad is a secondary screen, plug it into a 4K monitor, boom, IDE on one, secondary monitor on the other, just get me a Bluetooth keyboard and go to town. Yeah. Um, like, ideally, that would be my iPhone, but I don't have that yet. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're getting there, you know, in, in time. I feel like tablets are going to be that avenue first. Mm-hmm. Um, I think new on this iPad Pro is the USB port can drive more power. So I think the old uh, lightning to USB adapter couldn't power like a high-powered USB device. Mm. And now uh, you can. So I wonder if I could plug my audio interface 
into a new iPad Pro if I could use it there for both sound output and input. What's, that's, your, what's your audio interface? I have a, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Oh. So it's, it's 2XLR plus like a headphone and monitor. So Okay. Do you know if it shows up as a normal uh uh usb device like or are there specific drivers for it nope on uh, mac os i don't need to use any drivers it, j- it just shows up using the standard is it i don't know if it's the hid yeah. protocols or something i don't know, know what yep. they're called yeah it, it just shows up i've i do have a lightning to usb adapter for my ipad pro 2016 but mm-hmm. it you know shows a message saying it, it's drawing too much power so mm. Now, to drive, like, my current microphone, which is a condenser, I need to use phantom power, which goes up to 48 volts. So it, it uses a fair amount of power, I think. But yeah. the new iPad Pro can charge an iPhone if it's plugged into it as well. So Yep, yep. I wonder. I could actually test that because I think I have the little Focusrite 2 uh, device uh, sitting in a drawer. Yeah. If you, if you do, let me know. I'd be really interested to find that out because then I could you know, carry this with me around without a laptop and I could mm-hmm. truly be iOS podcaster. There you go. Yeah. So the, the thing I ran into, um, and like I said, I USB right into it. I could podcast. Um, but what we're doing now, uh, to explain it to someone is we're using, uh, a mic to record and to, uh, make a phone call. So in iOS, it's very much resource control. One app can use the mic. The other app cannot use the mic. Um, And that's very generic terms. Yeah, the division of hardware resources. I think it's the same for a camera. um, Yeah, that would make sense. And like full screen video or video you can only play one video at a time i guess that's related to audio though too so right well you can do uh you can do background audio and because that like youtube has background audio if you're a paid uh subscriber so you can minimize a window uh a browser window or the app it'll play music in the background but i'm trying to think have i ever tried to watch like a video or play a game or do something that requires the the audio resource i would bet uh, YouTube shuts down. Yeah, I feel like um, I've had background audio on like my iPhone or iPad, and then done, you know, like a GIF on Reddit or something. If there's no audio track, it will play the video that's you know silent. But mm. as soon as I want to include audio, then it takes full control. Yep. Yeah, I know that's been. I've heard people arguing for better audio routing, and I hope that would be coming because that's really a professional level um capability that would open some doors to new opportunities on ios yeah it would put the pro and ipad pro right exactly <laughs> so uh you've mentioned it's kind of like a home home device what other what kind of what are the main uses you have for the ipad so main uses for the home device i have a smart home set up with uh Now I kicked out Alexa and Google um, and the HomePods uh, went on sale during Christmas last year. Uh, So I bought a couple of those um, to be my home devices because I believe in Apple's privacy stance um, until they're not making enough money and then they're going to change their tune. But I believe that yeah. in what they say. Um, and I, you know, I really don't know. Google makes money off us and Amazon makes money off us because we buy stuff. Uh, but I would, I'll tell you this, they're different, different podcasts, but their uh, assistants are far ahead of Siri. Yeah. That's something but, I've consistently heard. Uh, I, I use Siri just a little bit here and there, and that's really all. So I have I have my smart home set up in Apple Home, so it's kind of the 
mission control of my house. So I have everything set up and rooms all separated and I can turn lights on and turn lights off. And, you know, it's kind of the device where like, if, uh, I need to do something, I can fiddle with it here. Um, you could do it on your phone. You could now do it on your laptop if you have a, uh, the latest release, but the iPad was primarily kind of my home mission control. I want it to be Jeeves at some point from Iron Man, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Um, and like at some point, I want this just sitting on the wall so anyone can walk up, grab it, and just kind of, it, it's the home base station, right? Um, but other than that, it's uh, primarily content consumption. Like you said, YouTube. Um, watching videos, uh, reading. I uh, do a lot of texture uh, magazines, um, Audible, and iBooks. Um, I primarily use it as my content consumption device. Um, and, of course, video games, because you know, video games. Yeah. Uh, uh, and to be honest with you, that's like one of my favorite games um, is Hearthstone, which is a card game. Um, and I was just, I was waiting. I was like, okay, it's going to be the refresh rate, uh, on this one, uh, is 120 Hertz when you're playing a game, um, something that's driving it and something that the average user is probably never going to notice coming from the iPad, uh, air two to the iPad pro, uh, seven, nine, which I used for a couple months in between, uh, to find out if I wanted to use the pencil or not. Um, Going to this one, uh, I thought, oh, this is going to be so great. Well, the game was never updated for the modern screen. And it mm -hmm. still, to this date, hasn't been updated. So it's in a window, borders on the side. So it's like, well, the one the one game I play on this all the time, you know, if I've got five minutes, I'll, you know, while I'm cooking dinner or doing something, it's just not, it's not programmed for it's not designed for it and i'm like oh that's unfortunate it's it's yeah. not an iphone version that's blown up on the ipad but it's for older ipads so yeah not, so yeah. uh the screen size changed um, yeah so, so it still runs a little bit letterboxed yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah sorry uh yeah it's it's it it was designed for the ipad originally um just it it fits better then it took them a real long time to actually release a UI for the phone because mm. it was so hard to condense the the card game into a good usable UI on such a small screen. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's a kitchen device. I use it. I get it dirty, uh, you know, bake bread, look up my recipes, you know, find something online that I want to cook and it's sitting in the kitchen getting dirty and... I really should put a case on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds well loved. Yeah. Um, and it's so light and portable. I mean, uh, why would you not use it if you if you have access to one? Um, one thing, I, uh, jumping back uh, hardware-wise, to compare this to the Air 2, um, I feel battery life is actually shorter. Um, but I, it, it's really hard to, uh, to say because I, I feel like I use it more, um, and I use the pencil more, which turns on that, uh, 120 Hertz, uh, graphical refresh. So you're kind of using more power to get the screen to repaint, uh, as fast as it can while you're using the pencil or, you know, drawing or anything like that. So um, my first initial week, two weeks with the device, it felt like it was just constantly needed to be charged. Um, and it's toned off a little bit. Um, I would equate that to new Apple device. It's still syncing with iCloud and doing all this stuff. Yeah. But it feels like I need to charge it more often. Um, hmm. That's kind of like, in a car term, it's the butt dyno saying how fast it is, 
you don't really know because you never bring it to a dyno. You just drive the car and kind of say, yeah, it's this fast. Yeah. It, it kind of feels like it's more power hungry. Um, is this, so this is your, is this your home kit home hub? Um, or do you have like an Apple TV that you use for that? So, or the old is, iPad? I think it's the home hub. Um, I do have, we do have a couple uh, Apple TVs. Um, I don't really know how HomeKit is set up. Like, I don't know if there's a primary device that controls everything. Yeah. So, um, so I have, I have several Sylvania lights. I think they all use Bluetooth. So I use my Apple TV as the home hub thing. So when I'm controlling the lights, it's really sending a message to the Apple TV to tell all the lights to turn, to turn on and off. So if you use your iPad as the home hub, it's probably needing to stay somewhat connected to them as time goes on, which might use more power. Mm, interesting. So if you have an Apple TV fourth or fifth generation, yeah, we have the, the 4K. We have a 4K on our 4K TV. Yeah. So if that's within range, I would... You could try that. That might help with battery life a little bit. Mm. Um, you'll probably have to like reset up your whole house in HomeKit, but <laughs> yay! <laughs> Another thing to do. Yeah. Um, well, that that's not a big deal because um, setting up stuff with HomeKit is super easy. The only thing that um, I would run into is I have a one or two devices that are ne- that were never HomeKit supported, so I did <laughs> a HomeBridge setup. Yeah, okay. And those are the ones that are finicky that like I have to go figure out. But uh what you're talking about, I've got a couple uh home pods that just randomly disconnect and are become unresponsive. Hmm. So that could be related to if the iPad's not in range, um, because I did set everything up recently with the iPad. Yeah. Huh, I'll have to look into that. So are there um, any apps that you use that are pretty notable that you want to call out in your um, use, usage of the iPad? Well, I would say Hearthstone, but that's just a game. Yeah. Uh, it's one that I use a lot, right? Uh, but it's not iPad specific. You just It's just a really good interface touching cards and shuffling through decks and whatnot. But... Um, I have Paper, um, which is my drawing app. Um, okay. They before the actual actual Apple Pencil came out, Paper built a um, a pen that mimicked finger, um, your your finger touch, and you could kind of draw with that. Um, so I never really have given up uh, drawing with that that app. Um, but I've also heard Procreate is another good, almost probably pro level uh, on the level of Photoshop uh, for the iPad. Um, yeah, I've heard Procreate is wonderful. Yeah, um, I've heard good things about Linea. Lin- Linea. Mm-hmm. I know, Icon Factory makes it. I haven't used it. I don't find myself much of a, a drawer or doodler. I don't. Mm. I've never owned an apple pencil despite having an ipad that supports it i just i don't use an ipad for that so right i've heard of all these but never actually used them myself um i use actually microsoft products um one note works really well for scribbling notes down while you're in a meeting and then uh kind of drawing up architectural design uh stuff quick little sketches and mock-ups for kind of wire framing and whatnot um I haven't really expanded out quite yet. Um, I'm looking for uh, an app to do some markdown editing. Um, And Brandon actually just recommended or said he uses Bear. um, Yeah. Which is a note uh, note app. I can't really call out whether it's good or not. I just just downloaded it. Um, I'm going to try that. trying to think don't buy any iHome products <laughs> their setup is horrible on the iPad or just on any iOS device um, uh, texture is a good app if you read magazines um, 
and you want to pay nine dollars a month to get quite a few magazines um played around with garage band uh fair right if you want to try to record uh podcasts or edit podcasts um that's what jason snell uses uh, yeah but i i would say i don't have anything specifically for the ipad okay well those are some some notable apps still i think we'll yeah. have them all linked in the show notes for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> YouTube app, but you know everyone everyone has that, right? Yeah. Uh, I saw today or very recently the YouTube app was updated to support the 1.75 times speed on the iOS version. It's been mm-hmm. on the web version for a couple of weeks now. That's the sweet spot for me for yeah. getting through YouTube videos fast. I can do double time podcasts, but not quite video. Yeah, I can't say that I've ever adjusted the time length on uh, video before. I never even thought of doing that. I do it in Audible, like 2x or 1.5 oh, yeah. podcasts all the time. Yeah, Should... I um, a lot of you know web players, like the Netflix web player or anything, if it's using HTML, HTML5 video, you can use a little JavaScript to change the speed of any video player as well. Mm. Nice. I think there are even some um, shortcut actions that you can build on iOS to do that automatically for you if you're on a page with a video. Well, do you have any final thoughts on the iPad? Um, other than the fact I'm a fanboy and I love it, um, like I don't know if we talked about keyboards too much on this, uh, yeah. if it was pre-show or this. Um I really want to try the smart folio keyboard um, or just connecting a Bluetooth keyboard to this to see if I can do software development on it, uh, mostly web development. Um, that's kind of where I'm going with it. Uh, I, d- I do think it could be like your, as Apple said, your replacement for a computer. Most general consumers, if you, they check email, they check Facebook, they go online, send, you know, view a couple websites. It's amazing to do that. Um, but you could probably get away with their base level iPad and do the same thing. Um, but if you want a device that could grow into becoming a computer replacement, I think they're, I think we're there. Like the hardware, we're hardware, we're there. Um, the software is just not quite there yet. Um, like we talked about the resources and, uh, yeah, being able to run like, a, a X code on it would be like amazing. Uh, yeah. Full, full development environments. Um, there are some apps like Pythonista and scriptable that will let you run JavaScript and Python scripts but um and i think even in there you can hook into the objective c layer and run private apis and things on oh really on device um there's some really interesting stuff you can do there but it's not super documented um so there are some ides but it's not like you can run node.js on your ipad right so yeah i'm I'm hoping we'll get there because i would i'd love to be able to just i don't know do some node or JavaScript development on my iPad. That'd be mm-hmm. a dream come true. Or run Ruby and, you know, build my personal Jekyll blog on on iPad and just quick format it a little bit or write a sure. post. You should use Gatsby. But I've used Gatsby a little bit, yes. So one other one other app I want to call out, but it's really an iOS app. It's shortcuts. Um yeah. which is like the ability to script some actions in iOS. Um, during Christmas, I had like, you know, the uh, Christmas lights you could turn on. You could be like, hey, Siri, turn on Christmas. Or, you know, welcome to the party, pal. And like the lights would change based on whatever command you wanted. Um, I haven't done a lot with uh, 
iOS specifically on the iPad, but on my phone, I can be like, hey, I'm on my way home. And it'll text someone, uh, my better half, like when I'm going to be home, like ETA based on where I am and how traffic is and all that fun stuff. Um, Shortcuts is such a powerful app uh, for iOS. Um, I kind of want to dive into that on the iPad too. Because I think you can do some file manipulation stuff and send things to Dropbox and uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of actions. Um, and now because it is first party, because Apple bought Workflow a year yep. and a half ago, um, more apps can more or more apps are supporting it than before. Um, and with iOS 12 or its sh- shortcuts two, um, you can now run arbitrary JavaScript in a web page, so you can automate scraping things or just open a blank web page and run a bunch of JavaScript and then jump back after doing some computation. There's some crazy stuff that you can do in that app. And I think we can look to iOS 13 this summer for hopefully some new iPad Pro features. Mm -hmm. Um, iOS 9 added uh, split screen and some more... um, multitasking features for the iPad and iOS 11 added drag and drop and the kind of the hover over, um, and a little bit of a redesign with the new dock, um, in apps. And so I think it's kind of, they're on an every other year for adding new, you know, pro features to iOS. Mm -hmm. And this would be their year to double down on software. Yeah, definitely. That's all I have. Yeah. That's all <laughs> that's all I have for a non iPad Pro user. <laughs> yeah. Well, where can we find you on the internet for oh, uh, hearing about thoughts on new I- on your iPad as you're uh, using it? You can find me uh on Twitter, 8 bit Aaron. Um and I'm did a blog this year, um, just at Braggins dot com. Um it's mostly gonna be just me trying to blog I have no idea if I'm going to continue to do it, but I got my first post hello world out there. So that's a start. It's a start. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L or my website, Brian M dot me. The second opinion is licensed under a creative common license. So please feel free to use this episode. Um, just provide some credit. Uh, you can discuss this episode on our subreddit, which is r slash the Nexus TV. And, Uh, If you like what we're doing, feel free to stop by our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. And with that, have a good one. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from from the the Technological Convergence. Convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why every month on The Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.